what is your how did you how were you able to to take that marketing mindset and use it towards promoting your music and specifically you know what is e man i've always understood that like uh i've always got the 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 smoke and mirrors concept i've always got the fake it till you make it concept bro i've always been intrigued by marketing and advertising right yeah and I'm from a city, man, where we got so many people that are talented, bro, just not in the entertainment or the music space, but like art, design, um, um, culture, uh, spoken word, man. We got great entrepreneurs, people that own their own salons and clothing lines. Like, I've seen so many people where I come from that have amazing skill set, and what I felt like they were all missing, bro, was one, the marketing, right, the exposure. And so yeah. I became obsessed, man, with figuring out how to help a person that can't get the eyeballs on them but has spent uh, so much of their time perfecting their craft and the production of what they're doing. How do we help them get the eyeballs that can help them actually monetize the brands, right? Yeah. And it started off in college, man. Like I went to school, uh, McDaniel College is out here in Baltimore, bro. And it's like, it's off the outskirts. It's not University of Maryland. It's not Towson. It's not UMBC. It's a much smaller school, but I mm-hmm. wanted to go be a big fish in a small pond. And what I realized, bro, is that if I could bring the people to me, then, of course, they could see my talent, right? They could see my ability. They could see what I was capable of. Right. That translates into corporate America, bro. And like I said, my first uh, first big corporate job, man, I was working with Agora, and my job was to drive traffic to a company and a brand that had certain products that was big in a Wall Street space, man, financial news space. Yeah. And I honed those skills, man. And what I learned how to do e is to figure out what inflation looks like, right? How can you help somebody look more popular than they really are? And yeah. people are big on social proof. So I'm a master bro of, you know, manipulating social proof, yo. All you really need to have is a quality product. And I think most of the people out there have taken care of that part. And 90% of them are missing in the marketing aspect, right? They're missing in that that man. engine in that machine. You nailed it, man. And this is something I, I specifically specifically wanted to ask you because so many artists I work with, they I'm trying to think of how I should say it. They don't see the benefit to to playing the game, quote unquote. Right. Like you're right. saying, there's so many other pieces to just making great music, which is a big part of it. And, you know, as we know, you were able to do that. But what's your what's your message to somebody who says you know ah, i don't know about all this marketing stuff you know they play the game i just want to put and i know you talk to probably hundreds of them right artists who think thousands man yeah that same way so what's what's your message to them when they're they're starting thinking that way you know what bro i'm from like i said bro i'm a, I'm a realist and i'm extremely yeah. transparent it's like um it's like I tell the guys, man, where I'm from, bro, if you get into the streets, right, let's just give you an analogy. You get into the streets, you know what comes with that. One, is no rules, right? And you got to protect yourself at all costs. So yeah. for the guys that get into a certain lifestyle and they like, I didn't sign up for this, bro, well, you know, you know, you got to prepare yourself for all things, right? It's the, it's the, it's the battles, bro. It's the, it's the war of attrition. So the way that I look at the music industry is that how do you want to be a part of an industry but don't want to accept everything that comes along with it? You mm. understand what I'm saying? Say it that's again. Just, just, that's just unacceptable mentality. It's an unacceptable mentality and an unacceptable mindset. Yeah. So for me, I found the guys that I felt were talented, bro. And like I said, I'm related to some of these young guys, bro. And they have been doing the same thing for 10 years, E. And it's like, bro, since when do you think that putting out more music or better music is going to get you different results if you didn't change up the way that you approached your rollout for the last decade? Yep. And as I watch their skill set get better and better, I also watch their demeanor and their passion for what they were doing decrease because they weren't seeing the results that they wanted to see. Absolutely. And when somebody says, bro, I'm not going to come and play the game, well, those are the people that we're not here to convince. They can sit on the sidelines and eventually when it clicks, right, we'll be here to go ahead and mold them and guide them and show them what's going on. And that's why YouTube is dope, bro. They'll be able to play this video back years from now, right? Yeah, They'll absolutely. be able to come back and look and be like, yo, he was giving me the game a long time ago. It's people <laughs> that still haven't seen my documentary, right? And yeah. they'll come back to 2022 and be like, I wish I knew about streaming farms and contracts and 360 deals and how torn works. Well, bro, the information is out here for you guys. And it wasn't the same way for people that were before us, right? Yeah. They wasn't like this for the generation that was before us. So that ignorance and what they went through, bro, we got to appreciate that we got the you know, education, bro. We got the resources. We got the people that's telling the stories about losing their masses and their publishing. We got Snoop Dogg talking about, bro, I did 4 billion streams. I got a check for $40,000. Pay attention. Yeah. 
pay attention to what's going on, man. And for me, bro, like I surrounded myself around the right guys, right? So my production is gonna be A1. I got a dope writing team, bro. I got the engineers, yeah. the mix and masters, I got the equipment, I got the at-home studio. All of the things that I had to do, E, I invested in, but I took it above and beyond to invest in how do I get this to the masses? So that's where T Pain, you know, uh, 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 feature comes from. That's where CIAA, that's where a world promo tour goes. That's where an international promo tour goes. Right. We invested, bro. We wanted this position. We wanted to do it independently, and now we're here. Yeah, and that's one of the biggest things I I push and I preach in this community is. I say, if you want record label results, you got to put in record label e effort. And, you know, yeah. there's all these artists who have record labels. They have these big teams behind them. Like you were saying, they've got, you know, somebody who does the music. They have somebody who does the marketing and they've never seen the the analytics to their Instagram profile or their music ever. You know, so yeah. it's it, it's dope to have people out you people like you out there that are actually giving a great message and telling artists like these are some of the steps and some of the things you're going to need to have if you want to perform at a certain level and you also got to figure out what your uh what your goals are too e. yeah. i think that's the the, the real thing that people got to be honest with themselves what do you want from this right yeah for me um like i said man my team they spent a lot of time on those coast to coast showcases right so they were paying to play as we call it right they were paying to perform at these little showcase events yeah. And I started to go to these events and I would watch people that weren't as successful or weren't as creative or weren't as good of rappers or singers as them. They would win. Well, why? Because they would bring more people in the audience, right? That could one vote for them. And of course, when the crowd looks like they're behind a, you know, artists, that right there is the proof in the pudding, right? Right. So my guy were talented, but they weren't able to drive ticket sales. So now it's like you're not understanding the business model bro yeah you can rap bro yeah you can freestyle yeah you can sing very well but nobody is coming to invest in what's going on so we can't put you on the bill you know we can't go and promote you because that doesn't turn into dollars this is a for business you know this is a for-profit business yeah. and um what i've seen bro is that hard ticket sales you got to have a strategy on how you make that happen right and how do you monetize your brand well, first you work on your craft, yo, and the second thing you got to do is, like you said, figure out the analytics. You got certain artists, bro, that, you know, your little babies, your money bag yo's, your yellow beezy, these are bigger artists. And when these guys come to your city or when these guys go on tour, they got a certain audience and they got a team behind them that has figured out what markets they need to go to and capitalize off their audience. So yeah. they're never moving blind, E. And if you're not going to have people that are on your team that can execute your target audience for you. You got to figure out this stuff yourself. So yeah, you got to be the artist, bro. You got to be the engineer. You got to be the marketer. And you want to play a lot of those roles, man, until it's worth it for other people to come and invest in your movement. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I, I, I'm i so glad you're saying that because I keep saying it and I keep preaching and I keep trying to push artists just to do certain things at scale, you know, and find yeah. out, like you said, find out exactly what their goals are and then figure out how they can take the structure that is already built. It's already been working from whether that's a record label or successful independent artists and use that for themselves, which nice. um, that actually that make that leads me into the next question I wanted to ask you talking about up and coming artists and independent artists doing this at scale. And in one of your recent interviews, the interview you did with Brandman, you said I could take a record right now with the right budget and go number one and nice. that man that is such a powerful statement not only because you know you're you're saying that you have the knowledge to be able to push a record or push an artist the right way but you also there's an opportunity there to have the conversation with independent and up-and-coming artists of how they can kind of carve their path to getting to that point if that's their goal Maybe they want to yep. make, maybe they just want to make a good living. They say they want to make 10,000 off 10,000 a month off of their music. So what would you using that point at scale? What would you say to an artist that says, Hey, I just want to make you know money off of my music. I don't know where to start. I've got the music side of things. Now I need to find a path moving forward. I think, uh, like I said, breaking down the numbers, man, E first and foremost, bro. Like, I think that people fail to plan and, you know, failure to plan is planning to fail. Right. So let's sit and look at what you just said. And and this is dope. If you look at my background right now, I got my own university and it's basically showing artists yeah. like multiple ways to take their music independently and make 10K per month. I feel like 
you know, making six figures with your music is a is a is a courageous goal, you know, and after taxes, you're gonna have a little bit of change left. And if you reinvest the right way, it makes sense. So let's put it like this, bro. If you do three million streams a month, right, on Spotify, you know, at the rate that they're paying us right now, that's ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Right. So what plan does the artist put in place to go and get three million streams? Now you got the content creation aspect, right? Are you creating content every day, right? Are you promoting that single on a consistent basis? Are you being, you know, creative in the way that you do things? How are you standing out? All right, that's one aspect. Running ads, right? You got Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, Google. You got all these platforms that you can run ads. If you don't know how to run ads yourself, you can pay somebody off of Fiverr or you can teach yourself, right? So how do you cut the cost? You gotta make things make sense. So you got different ways to drive traffic to your brand. And you don't just got to concentrate on one single. I'm a guy that talks about catalog, right? So I do the brand man network and I'm like, look, guys, I got yeah. a catalog of 200 records. Yo, people might know my one record, Dance With Me, Chad Focus and T-Pain. But as far as that record and the money that we spent, I'm still in the red, bro. When you go get a big time feature and you need all of this money and all these bells and these whistles, you got to make a lot of money on the return on investment. Absolutely. Whereas there's records that cost me $50 to make and that record has made me $5,000. That's a much more conscious and smart approach so right. i think strategy gotta make sense e um as far as what i do in the streaming space bro i basically went and i figured out catalogs so that i was able to use these machines and these systems these labels do and stay underneath of the radar i can't send a million streams a day to one chair focus record as an independent <laughs> artist raise a red flag but i can send a million streams to 200 records to 2000 records a day spread it out bro and get different distributors to pay me a certain percentage on all of those records Think yeah. about how the record label moves, bro. They don't got just one artist that monetizes the entire, you know, company. They got thousands of artists, bro. They own thousands of records. Yeah. So I'm also in a music publishing space, E. I use platforms like Royalty Exchange. I use platforms like Songvest. I own pieces of Nicki Minaj, Katy Perry, Day 26. I own pieces of TLC. Like, just a young black kid from Baltimore that decides to invest in a different way, right? Yeah. When the Jordan releases come out, bro. I don't know and I don't care because I'm trying to figure out the long game, right? This is my dish. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Dish, right? So I don't got yeah. a PlayStation. I got a laptop. I got a microphone. I got this little podcast setup that you see. So I've decided to take certain sacrifices, bro, to invest. And that's the most important part that we should be telling these artists. Business plan, sacrifice, figuring out your infrastructure to drive traffic. $10,000 a month, right? That's 3 million streams. If you do a couple shows a month, could you figure out how to do eight shows, bro? Where you're making fifteen hundred dollars a pop you're paying off your expenses do you know how to rent a venue do you know how to book other artists so it's different ways to kind of figure this out e yeah. and independently it forces you bro to kind of execute it differently bro it allows you to sit back and think and strategize and if somebody else doesn't do it for you, you got to do it for yourself 